Um, so a very common question that I get when people are trying to, or my friends are trying to learn certain knowledge programs is, where do I start? And I would say that the first place you really want to focus on is understanding the execution model, or really just how computation is processed when it comes to zero knowledge programs, because it is very different from traditional computation. And getting a good understanding of this will get you, you know, the eighty percent of the way there to really get started and hit the ground running when it comes to zero knowledge compute. So let's start with an example specific to Mina Protocol because they're going to come out with the ZK programmability on mainnet just a few months. It's on the roadmap for this year, which is really exciting. Um, and in that platform, you write your contracts and your code in this language called SnarkyJS, which is really just a superset of TypeScript. Um, and then something weird happens when it comes to execution because it doesn't get executed on your computer just right away or in like bytecode or TypeScript code. What it does, what happens is it actually gets converted into something called a arithmetic circuit through something called kimchi. Now that might just seem very uh, weird or scary to you, but it's not really that complicated when it comes to the intuition around it. What is really important to understand is this arithmetic circuit that gets generated for the zero knowledge proof is really a mathematical way of turning your computer program into something that is observable. So you can imagine um, that you want some code that's running to be observable by a different computational entity or a mathematical entity called a witness. And that's really what's happening here is you're taking code that might be like adding two numbers together and you're creating a, uh, a different type of program that allows it to be observed by something. And the reason we want this observation is because we want to send a proof that this observation exists to the consensus mechanism or a validator that then verifies that this observation occurred for this computation. So let's say you add two plus two, and you want to create a proof of observation that observed that uh, a number was multiplied by two. Well, two plus two does equal four, and that's two times two. So you can create this proof of observation that the number doubled, send it to the verifier, and that updates the global state in whatever way you want predicated on this observation. And this is very different from traditional blockchains like Ethereum, where you would have most of your code actually stored publicly and running publicly in a conceptual way. And the way this happens is, uh, in the Ethereum virtual machine, you really just have a computer online, and it's all public. Your read-only memory stores your code, you're, you have a stack, you have memory, and you have a bunch of other things like storage. But the transaction you're sending is going to be some representation of a function call. So this could be in your call data, and you have like a nonce and gas data, and all that's sent to a consensus mechanism that is public, and the transactions are added to a blockchain of transactions. Um, and your most recent transaction might contain your call data, and running all of these transactions uh, is what is represented by turning this computer on and running it throughout and updating the global state. And so as you can see here, there, there's a reason why zero-knowledge-based blockchains are very small because all they really need is the global state. They don't need a history of all call data and all transactions stored publicly. Um, and that also gives you an understanding of why MENA protocol might be more powerful than, say, something like Ethereum. But it's also important to understand this when you're actually writing ZK programs so that you know how to interact with them, how to execute with them. And so I really think fundamentally the one thing you really want to focus on if you're really excited about ZK programming is first getting a good grasp of the execution model and how your code's actually running.